Yeah, this is great. Beats the fucking crap out of me. My God. I watched this match twice. One of the times I had to take notes for this match. There was just so... Lost the North American Championship before ch challenging for the NXT Championship because that's the way Rocky works. He was a man. Tony, Tony Khan said he's so. Who cares about the rules? But we care about the fucking rules because this is life's opening radio road break. This is all about rules. Yeah. Let's open radio road break. Hey guys, Carbonate here, and today we're back with another episode of. Life's opening radio rope break and today um well we haven't really got a theme it's just a normal graphic that we usually have <clears throat> and today we're gonna continue our yearly tradition of reviewing AEW Dynamite Winter is coming um so we're gonna review that show uh for this year and yeah I got my friend and assistant host Ben Charles with me here today. Uh, ben, would you like to introduce yourself? I will introduce myself right now. Hello, everyone. I am Ben Charles. Um, as Kaba mentioned, the assistant host of Road Break. Uh, this is a interesting episode considering how AEW has been getting a lot of criticism as of late for the booking of different wrestlers and of different ways and also some people are saying um tony khan in a way like he it, he's kind of reminding people of vince mcmahon all of a sudden yeah, you, you heard about yeah. this yeah i have seen that people have been um criticizing AEW more and more over the past couple of weeks or past couple of months um <clears throat> Uh, people I saw on Twitter, people were angry that uh, you know Jeff Jarrett and Matt Hardy were getting so many title shots and matches. And one guy said, "Meanwhile, Keith Lee and Andrade are hardly on TV," which is true. Well, well, at least Andrade was on TV this week. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, I have seen uh, AEW getting criticized more and more. Um. Yeah, which is quite um, surprising because it's usually the two of us that mostly criticize AEW. Um, and yeah, <clears throat> um, speaking of AEW, they might um, have a bit of trouble with Warner Brothers now because WWE is looking for a deal with Warner Brothers, a TV deal with Warner Brothers, which... I don't know if I would do because, you know, um, it, Warner Brothers has been having a lot of uh, like bad um, business decisions and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, um, already NXT is moving to the CW and uh, Josh just made a little sound. There. He's he's probably means that this is a joke. And uh, um, yeah, um yeah yeah um by the way josh is below us you might not really see him uh because we're kind of reviewing this um just the two of us um josh is playing fortnite in the background or doing whatever in the background he's just here recording for us uh, as um i'm so thankful that he's done i don't know why i didn't think of this sooner but yeah i'm one step closer to a finally a normal episode of rope break um which will hopefully start in february when i get my new computer um and uh yeah <laughs> thanks josh for that and um yeah ben what are your thoughts on this warner brothers thing i don't i don't think aew's i don't think aew is leaving warner brothers i'll be honest i don't think wwe like have the 
I'm not going to say they don't have the money because they do. But at the same time, I feel like WWE doesn't need Warner Brothers because in a way they would kind of be very limited in the way that um, they conduct business with Warner Brothers. Like AEW is being uh, limited with their creative, um, the way they um, can be very creative outside. You know, they can't think outside the box when it comes down to Warner Brothers. So it's only fair that. AEW stays with Warner Brothers, and I think they're going to resign considering Warner Brothers really likes AEW to begin with. So I don't see this happening. I'm one of those kind of people who, uh, if I if I see it, then I'll believe it. I'm one of those kind of people. But other than that, I don't think WWE is going nowhere. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Apparently, CM Punk may have a lot of sway behind it. And um, yeah, uh, so I don't think we'll he does. About- Oh uh, yeah. So we'll, we'll, as Ben said, I'll I'll believe it when I see it. So yeah, it's just a matter of seeing um what happens there. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much all the news. That was just something that popped up over the last week. Um. So yeah, now we're gonna get into the meat of the matter, which is AEW Dynamite Winter is coming, uh, which took place at the College Park Center in Dallas, Texas, which is of course in the United States. This took place on Wednesday, the thirteenth of December, twenty twenty three, and I don't know why Josh uh, made that sound. The hell was, uh, the hell was that? <laughs> come on, come on, man. <laughs> no. Yeah, um, uh, uh, anyways, yeah, um, by the way, by the time you hear this, um, I will be 19 years old, uh, because I'm turning 19 on Saturday or tomorrow for the rest of us, (laughs) and yeah, thank you, Josh, I can't wait to celebrate, and yeah, um, um, yeah, now we're just gonna get into it, um, oh, Samoa Joe cut a promo, um, and he, uh, last week he had found MJF having been beaten up by, um, I, I like to call them the devil's advocates because they will go on wearing that devil mask and they beat people up backstage. Um, and then uh, he saw a broken beer bottle next to MJF. And then uh, Samoa Joe said, it's the brand that a certain cowboy likes. And when I went to the back to find this cowboy, a certain hangman was not there. And he now he's accusing hangman of beating up MJF. And um, MJ, uh, Hangman has been framed for MJF's attack. And then Hangman immediately came out as soon as Samoa Joe mentioned his name, which kind of annoys me, but whatever, since it didn't really affect this episode that much. Um, but yeah, whatever. Um, and Joe, Samoa Joe wants to keep MJF at 100% before World's End so that he can uh, personally dismantle MJF. Oh, oh the lich is coming out. Cabo. <laughs> uh, Cabo, <laughs> um, before we continue on with this segment, I got to point out as well. I did find a couple of people um, for this opening segment alone. First of all, we will get to that. We will get to that. Um, Hangman dispels Joe's accusations. He says he doesn't care about the devil. Um, And then um, Samoa Joe says, you made the mistake of thinking I'm some kind of detective or something to that effect. Um, Then Hangman tried to challenge Joe, and as Ben tried to mention, Roderick Strong still employed, Mike Bennett go back to Ring of Honor, and Matt Tavern go back to Ring of Honor, interrupted him. Roderick Strong suspected MJF is the devil, and then he was yapping around like a goon with those goofy-ass glasses of his and that neck brace that he's wearing. Yeah, Ben, go ahead and find him. $500 for Roderick Strong. And Roderick Strong at this stage was better off in NXT. The fire doing that diamond mine stuff or whatever. 
you he was better off doing that than um doing all of this now he's straight yeah, up also. just get off tv and then hangman yeah. jumped roderick strong roderick fought back uh, samoa joe walked away and ben um you can talk now all right. First of all, Roger Strong is also getting another one hundred dollar fine. This man came out, and I quote, in a neck strong t shirt. Pulse. That's exactly what the shirt said. Neck strong. Come on with this fucking neck strong nonsense. Pulse. Please stop. Stop this. <laughs> yeah, it's not that fucking funny. It's not funny. Come on, man. Oh man. Yeah, that's crazy. Hey, and man, Aubrey, Edwards, Roger Strong. Yeah, and immediately after that, Aubrey Edwards, the ref, was in the ring, and straight into that, we go into Hangman Adam Page versus Roderick Strong, still employed, with the Kingdom consisting of Mike Bennett, still employed, and Matt Tavern, still employed. Oh man, what is this Wednesday night Raw something? And um, Hangman got stomped out by Roderick Strong. He did some chops in the corner. Hangman did some chops in the corner. Roderick Strong got some heat on Hangman. Uh, Hangman fought back. He did more chops. Hangman did a fall away slam. He did a shooting star for a two count. They beat each other up. Roderick Strong did a backbreaker for one count. He went for a headlock. Hangman shot him off and gave him a big boot. He did a suplex for a one count. Roderick Strong got some heat on Hangman. He got thrown on the apron. Hangman did a second row forearm, which I liked. He did a plancha on Roderick Strong. Mike, Ta uh, Ma uh, Mike Bennett distracted Aubrey Edwards. And then Matt Tavern tried to stop Hangman from doing the Orahara moonsault. And yeah, you can find him. $200 each for that. Roderick Strong got back in the ring. He did an insecurity, did a backbreaker on the top turnbuckle. Um, uh, they went to the break. They fought at ringside. They got back in the ring. Roderick Strong got some more heat on Hangman, and Hangman fought back. Roderick Strong did a jumping knee, and yada, yada, yada. The match went on. We got back from the break. Roderick Strong had a uh, wrist lock. He did, they had a one two exchange. They both hit discus forearms um and they laid down selling hangman made a comeback he did a death valley driver in mid -air. Uh, he did a um a big boot in the corner and he bit roderick strong um he and yeah i, I was at this point i was like these biting people is it's at a canadian destroyer level of overused and annoying like everybody's biting each other in this company uh hangman goes for a superplex but then roderick strong fought out of it roderick strong uh did a sunset uh, went for the sunset power bomb but then hangman fought out of it hangman missed a moonsault and landed on his feet he did a pop-up power bomb for a near four they replayed that spot they laid down selling Roderick Strong escaped a dead eye. He hit two insiguries. Um, he did a side suplex kind of slam. Um, and that was nice. He went for the pin, got a two count. He went for another one of that side suplex slam. And then Hangman fought out of it. Roderick Strong did a side suplex. Uh, he went for the Tiger Driver. He did a Tiger Driver and got a two count. He put in the stronghold, uh, but then Hangman got a rope break. Roderick Strong went for a suplex, but then um, Hangman escaped onto the apron. And I was like, please be it. Um, he went for the box shot, but then the Kingdom kept attacking him. He did the Orihara moonsault on the Kingdom. He finally went for the box shot, Lariat. Um, yeah, you can find the Kingdom again, $400 each. Um, he finally went for the box shot. Uh, Roderick Strong counted with a stronghold hangman got a pin escape and he hit the um dead eye for the win i was like oh, oh finally uh, and uh this match was a drag uh, it was still okay i gave rasn a six and logic a one because all that bs that happened in the start ben what are your thoughts on this match 
Um, for the Hangman Adam Page and Roderick Strong segment, um, I thought it was interesting. Um, I don't see a reason why Roderick Strong is now getting involved with the MJF nonsense, though. Even though he's been involved, like he did not need to fight Hangman Adam Page on this show. Hangman Adam Page could have fought somebody else. He could have fought Joe. I would have been fine with that. Yeah. But other than that, like, I'm gonna have to give this match a. I'm gonna give this match a seven. I'll be honest. I'll give this match a seven. Um, Hangman Adam Page and Roger Strong had a pretty decent match, but the Kingdom is gonna drag it down for me, honestly. So yeah. basically, yeah. uh, wrestling seven, logic zero. The fuck <laughs> was this on the show for? Absolutely. This did not need to be on the show. Yeah. No, it did yeah. not. And people are going to say, oh, well, Roderick Strong needs television time. We know he needs TV time. Just not with him coming out in a fucking neck brace and wearing fucking neck strong t-shirts. Paul, that, no, don't, no, 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 no. Not on this show. No. <laughs> yeah. And now, um, a, a match in the AEW Continental Classic Blue League, Brody King versus Andrade El Idolo with CJ Perry. I kind of thought it was bizarre that CJ Perry was there because wasn't she managing um, Powerhouse Hobbs a couple months ago? What? <laughs> no. She, she, no. She came, she came out um, to see Miro and then Miro said, no, go away. And then she went to um, powerhouse Hobbs uh, I, what is happening with CJ Perry okay here's what's going on so on collision CJ Perry is offering her valet services to a wrestler Andrade took her up on the offer they signed a deal on collision and that's how Andrade and CJ Perry are paired together that's pretty much uh, how I'm going uh, to explain okay 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 well, yeah, yeah. Uh, ben, I'm going to give you the honor of uh, reviewing this match, if you have the notes. And I will review this match because I did take notes for this match, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Andrade versus Brody King, they start off. They both run the ropes. Um, Andrade brings down Brody King with a side headlock. And um, El Andrade El Idolo, they, they start chain wrestling for a bit. So they head to the corner and they both trade chops at each other. Brody King beats up Andrade for a bit. And then Brody King put on a sleeper hold on Andrade on the apron. But Andrade escapes out. And then he hits a crossbody for a one count, which was weird. Normally, that would be a two count. But I'll pass a little small nitpick here and there. But don't worry about that. Um, Brody King goes to the outside where Andrade meets him with a moonsault off the middle turnbuckle. As they fight into the ring... Brody King knocks Andrade El Idolo to the outside as we head to commercial break. After the break, um, Brody King has Andrade El Idolo down with a chin lock. Andrade El Idolo comes back. He puts uh, he hits Brody King with a drop kick to the knee while he was while Brody King is rushing out Andrade. Andrade um, tries to do something. He tries for a dragon screw, but at one point it kind of. Like, like he did hit a dragon screw so he did hit a dragon screw and then he did a couple of knee strikes and an elbow strike as well so that was cool so they both go back and forth for a little bit Andrade has a body slam on Brody King and then he heads to the top rope hits a split leg and moonsault for a two count that was awesome holy yeah. crap that looked great um, I, I, Brody King I, would call, but, I, would, I knew I know it is Starship Pain so I guess I've learned a new wrestling move I know it is Starship Pain, but I guess now I'll call it a split-legged moonsault. Go on, Ben. Sorry for cutting you off. It's okay. Um, I don't mean to... I, I, I'm going to have to correct you on that, because Starship Pain is a corkscrew moonsault. It's not oh, exactly... Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, Brody King um, goes at Andrade, but Andrade... Oh, Andrade goes after Brody King in the corner. But Brody King escapes. He has a nasty lariat for a two count. He beheaded Andrade oh, on this lariat. Oh, dang. my goodness. Jesus. Brody King has a cannonball, but he gets a two count. And then they both go back and forth once again. Brody King and Andrade trading shots. El Ido, El Andrade almost said somebody else. Andrade hits a back elbow, knocking King down. Brody King is knocked out. But Andrade then starts struggling to get onto the top rope. 
But then Brody King gets back up. They start toughening on the top rope where it looks like Andrade um, was going to push Brody King off. But apparently in the middle of this, the exposed turnbuckle came off and Andrade drops Brody King on the exposed turnbuckle um, face first. And then he hits the Andrade DDT, the hammerlock DDT. One, two, three. Andrade beats Brody King. I'm not mad that Brody King lost, but at the end of the day, Andrade deserved this win more than Brody King did. Uh, Brody King will be fine in AEW for sure. I'll give this match an eight, and Logic, I'll give it a two. Yeah, yeah, this is this was fine. Uh, by the way, I think this round robin format is kind of BS. It, it's just so goofy, in my opinion. The, uh, this whole tournament is goofy and pointless, in my opinion. Why do they need another championship? Uh, and um, I don't know. Not even the fact that they're putting the New Japan Eddie Kingston's New Japan Strong title and ROH title on the line. Um, <laughs> whatever, yeah. man. So, yeah. ladies, so, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who don't know, for those of you who don't know the Continental Classic, so the winner of this tournament um, is going to win both the ROH and the New Japan Strong Openweight Championships. Um, they're going to win both the Ring of Honor World title and the New Japan Strong um, Openweight title. And they will also win the AEW Continental Championship. So basically, three championships on one person. Nonsense. Get mm. off television. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But other than that, I'll give this match wrestling 7.5 and Logic a 6. This is what's good. Uh, and then uh, Renee Paquette interviewed the Von Erics. This is a BS segment. Trent Beretta. AEW International Champion Orange Cassidy still employed and Dan Housen still employed. They interrupted the match and that was all I needed to see and I skipped that segment. The fine for all, um, all of them. $500 fine for every single person that I was in on my screen there. Um, Everyone yeah, but, except Renee Paquette is getting fined. Yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think that's appropriate. Horrible segment. Um, yeah, horrible segment. But a much better segment was the Golden Jets, consisting of Kenny Omega and Chris Jericho. They had a promo. Um, and then the Golden Jets kept getting attacked by Ricky Starks and Big B Big Bale. Um, Big and, Bale. <laughs> yeah, they're the AEW tag champs, and uh, the Golden oh. Jets are the number one contenders. Um, and yeah, after full gear, um, uh, Ricky Starks and Big Bill attacked the Golden, attacked Chris Jericho. And then on, uh, I think last week on Collision, um, Big Bill attacked Kenny Omega. And, um, yeah, that's, uh, that whole thing. Um, and Jericho called out Ricky Starks and Big Bill. Uh, they came out. Um, and, uh, I was like, Ben, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think um, Ricky Starks fought um, uh, Chris Jericho uh, on Winter is Coming last year. Or I think it might have been New Year's Smash, actually. Um, it was the it was the first episode of Dynamite in 2023. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, New Year's Smash. Yeah, I remember. Uh, Ricky Starks did mention that. So thanks for that. Um, yeah, they uh, they tell. Um, J they tell Omega not to trust um, Jericho because, you know, what happened to the inner circle, what happened to JAS. By the way, I'm so happy JAS is a thing of the past. They were so goofy. Um, Anna J, a freaking um, 2.0, horrible stable. I'm so glad that's over with. Um, and it's just but, um, the thing is, well, I don't mean to cut you. I don't mean to hold on. I don't mean to cut you off, Cabo. My bad. Yeah, but um, man. I do know that Ruby Soho is still associated with them because apparently they're having a little subplot where Angelo Parker and Ruby Soho are a thing now. What? Yeah. What? Apparently they. Uh, apparently they like each other. Are they happy? A love storyline. <laughs> on this edition of get off my television oh, and also just for that just for mentioning that 
Fine. <laughs> That's crazy. Just in that movie Soho and then to a park. They- fine. One thousand dollars. Waste of time. Atrocious. They having a love storyline on AEW now. Oh man! Yeah, matter Don't of fact, Tony Khan needs to get a one thousand dollar fine too for facilitating this. <laughs> Come on, man! You got it. Yeah. Anyways, um, speaking of get off my TV, uh, Kenny Omega mentions. Remember the firm? I don't. And then he roasted them, which was funny. <laughs> and then, yeah, I don't think anybody really liked the firm either. Um, so, yeah, um, they challenged uh, Ricky Starks and Big Bill at World End, World's End for the tag team titles, which we will review. Um, and then Ricky Starks and Big Bill accepted their challenge. And, you know, they said they're the best tag team in AEW without a name. And then Jericho suggested the absolute assholes as a tag team name. And then he said, no, 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 I can do better. How about Ricky and Dick? (laughs) And, yeah, I thought that was funny. Whoa, (laughs) whoa, boss. Hey, yo, what? (laughs) I heard that, too. I was like, what? (laughs) Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What part of the game is this? Oh, no. uh, and then, um, Fine. and then, uh, Fine for that life. No, crazy. Uh, okay, well, that's a bit overkill, but whatever. And then, uh, Jericho suggests Big Billy Stocks. And then, um, Excalibur actually mentioned that, um, Billy Stocks and Athena are gonna fight for the ROH Women's Championship on Final Battle, which Ben is interested in, and he might do an extra review on. Um, so yeah, keep your eye out for that. Um, and yeah, uh, I didn't think of that myself. For th- so thanks, Excalibur. I guess uh, Ricky Starks <laughs> tried to um, roast Jericho's outfit. Um, he went for. He said like something uh, to the effect of. You went to the hot topic and said, give me the best you got, and that's what you got? Oh, pathetic, something like that. Um, and then Jericho said, um, oh man, this is going to get spicy now. You call me a cloud vampire. Believe me, if I want to stick my fangs in somebody, I'd do it with some- to someone with much more clout than you. And then Jericho called Ricky Starks a better, and I quote, a better dressed, less charismatic version of Enzo and Amora. And I was like, damn. Yo, Jericho was swinging for the fences here. <laughs> oh man, Omega said, hey, hey, let's give Enzo Mori some credit here. Or oh, at least he would hype up Big Bill instead of take all of the spotlight. I was like, oh man, <laughs> lol. Um, and then Ricky Starks got salty and then he said, okay, we're gonna um, defend our belts at Wolves and you know, that kind of stuff. You Winnipeg scumbags. And then, um, yeah, um, Omega says you'll be bidding those tag belts to do on the on the thirtieth of December, and yeah, it's official. Um, in you know, he's like, goodbye, good night, bang, and yeah, this was a very good segment, uh, a very good segment, a lot of shots fired in this segment, and yeah, um, Ben, what do you think about this segment? This was a good this was actually a really good segment until the part where he said, and I quote, the Rick and the other word, which I will not mention. Other than that, good good segment. I had no problem with the segment. Yeah, yeah, this is good. And something that was also pretty good, um, Ruby Soho versus Riho. And then AEW women's world champion Tony Storm was on commentary. Um and if I didn't mention already, she's got this 1950s movie star gimmick. Um, you know, this type of Marilyn Monroe kind of thing. Um, and uh, yeah, um, she's even got this uh, grayscale and lowered frame rate at when she, whenever she's on the screen. And yeah, it's pretty cool in my opinion. Um, yeah, they started the match. 
uh, Ruby Ruby Soho beat up Riho. Um, and she did a body slam for a two count. Riho did a drop kick. She did a running knee in the corner. She did a suplex with a bridge for a two count. She did double foot stomp. Ruby retreated to ringside. They had a struggle at the turnbuckle. Ruby hung on top rope like like this. This episode of Rope Break is interrupted to advertise Lux Open Radio certified bangers. A roller coaster of music consisting of drum and bass. <laughs> Indie pop. Pop and R and B. Soundtracks. And anything else that comes to Harpo's mind as well as world news and special guests. You can listen to Life's Opening Radio Certified Bangers every Sunday afternoon on Spotify. Back to your regular scheduled program. And then um, Riho did a double foot stomp on her. They went to the break. Riho uh, called out to Tony Storm because, you know, she wants to fight Tony Storm. I'm guessing at World's End. Um, yeah, it may it would make sense to have it at World's End. She goes for the pin on Ruby, gets a two count. She does a kick. She misses a Tiger Fane kick. Ruby or Soho does kind of a leg sweep. You know, slams it down on the canvas. She... Goes for ground and pound punches. Uh, she chokes Riho with both hands. Um, she does a suplex for a two count. Puts in a side headlock. Gives Riho some headbutts. And Riho makes a brief comeback. Uh, and then Ruby was working on the arm a bit. Riho escaped. We got back from the break. Riho did a hurricane runner. She did a tiger fane kick. Uh, she did a crossbody for a two count. She, um, they had um, back-to-back pin attempts. Ruby Soho did a thrust kick. She did a Saito suplex. Riho hit a crucifix driver for a two count, which was nice. Um, Riho missed a double foot stomp. Um, and then Ruby Soho hit no future for a near fall. She went for the guillotine. Riho uh, from that guillotine did a Northern Lights suplex. Well, for a two count, and that was quite cool. She did a dragon suplex, she, and then she did ro- double running knees um, for the win. I thought this was a very good match, probably the second best match on the show behind the main event. And yeah, I think Riho has improved a lot uh, since the last time I saw her. And yeah, I like her a lot more now than I would have uh, like. Um, in like even when AEW had started up, I would watch a match of her. Now I, 
I didn't really get what people like so much about her, but she's kind of grown on me now. I like her a lot more now. I gave Rasen an 8 and Logic a 7. What do you think about this match, Pain? Ruby Soho takes another loss. To the surprise of nobody. Riho, I am glad that Riho is back. I have been critical about Riho in the past. About the way she's been booked, about the way she's not been on television, about the way that she has been almost completely non-existent in any kind of angle or any kind of storyline whatsoever. But the fact of the matter is this. Riho does not deserve a title shot before Willow Nightingale, Jamie Hayter, and Mercedes Martinez. Absolutely not. No. No. Hell no. And I'm going to stick by this because a lot of people... Now, I don't mind Riho getting a title shot. At, at, like, at first, I didn't mind her getting a title shot, but, but at the same time, like... Riho's not winning the women's world championship. What's the point of giving her a title shot if she ain't gonna win? That makes no that makes no sense. Like she we already know she gonna lose against Tony Storm. So what's the what's the what's the big idea? Is this is this supposed to get Tony Storm more over? She's already more over. Is this supposed to get yeah, Riho over? No. no. Huh? She's over as hell, Tony Storm. Right. Is this supposed to get Riho over? Like, Riho is already, she's already liked, but, like, she's not, she hasn't won a lot of matches for me to, like, for me to make her, ex let me rephrase this, she has not won a lot of matches for me to, to be convinced that she can beat Tony Storm. So what's the point of the match? Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh, other than that kind of weird booking, this was a good match, and yeah. Um, yeah, it was a good match. I forgot to give a rating for this. I give this a 7. Logic, probably a 5. Okay, yeah. That's fair. Apparently now Wardlow wants an AEW title shot, and I'm like, whatever, man. Yeah. Uh, Wardlow been uh, fighting jobbers. Come on. He wants a title shot. He, he been fighting jobbers. The last time I saw him on AEW, man was fighting Griff fucking Garrison. Did anyone know if Griff Garrison was still fucking employed in this fucking company? <laughs> Are you yeah, kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> I remember when Brody Lee was... <laughs> Was trying to fight Jungle Boy or something, uh, and uh, um, on being being the elite, and um, he found Griff Garrison is there. He was like, "That's not Jungle Boy, that's Griff Garrison." And yeah, that was funny as hell. <laughs> yeah. And then John Silver said, "Who the fuck is Griff Garrison?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh man, back when the Dark Order was somewhat funny on being the elite. And yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Rip Brody Lee. Man. I don't think anyone I don't him. think anyone listening to this episode knows who he is. Does anyone know who Griff Garrison is? I don't. Well, yeah, there's a, actually a, there's actually a meme of John Silver and Anna J and it's it's got nothing to do with AEW. It's, they just put random captions over it. And then it's Anna J and uh, John Silver there. And I find it like so weird that I'm like one of the few people that actually knows who those two people are. Like most people that post those memes don't know those two. That it's Anna J and John Silver. <laughs> oh man, it's crazy. That meme is so popular. But yeah, uh, on to the next match. Um, this is a Gold League match in the AEW Continental Classic. Roosh versus Jay Lethal. They started the match. Jay Lethal put in a side headlock. Roosh did a shoulder tackle. He went for a kick. Um, he did a kick. They had a leapfrog sequence, and they are basically going 200 miles an hour. Um, Jay Lethal did a cartwheel and then a drop kick, which is nice. He did a Ric Flair strut. Um, he Roosh did a German suplex. He did a psycho knee kind of move. Uh, they fought at ringside. He got back in the ring. Roosh did a did some chops. He taunted. You know, he did that laying down kind of thing. Um, 
Roosh did a scoop slam for a two count. Uh, they had a struggle at the turnbuckle. Jay Lethal missed a top rope move. Uh, he hit lethal combination. Elbow. Uh yeah, he went for he missed the elbow. He hit lethal combination. Roosh did a cradle pin for a two count. Lethal did a kick. He went for lethal injection, but then Roosh did some chops. Jay Lethal hit an Isengiri. He charged at Roosh, but then Roosh threw Jay Lethal into the corner, which was nasty. Roosh charged at Jay Lethal. Jay Lethal, Jay Lethal did a super kick. Jay Lethal went for lethal injection, but then Roosh counted with a sleeper, and then Jay Lethal tapped. And the story behind that is that uh, last week, John Moxley um, tapped out Roosh with a sleeper. I was like, damn, that was quick. But this was an okay match. I gave Rasen a 7 and Logic a 6. What do you think about this match, Ben? This match went under five goddamn minutes. Jay Lethal was the biggest fucking jobber in the history of civilization in AEW. What in the fuck is going on with Jay Lethal? Can this man win a goddamn match in this fucking tournament? What is going on here? Who writes this? Ridiculous. Why is Jay Lethal even in the tournament if he's going to lose in under five minutes to Rouge? This went under five minutes. I was ready to give this a no rating. I was so ready to give this a no rating, but I didn't. The reason why I didn't was because Roosh won. And the reason why I say I was I I won't give it a no rating was because Roosh is he's upset. He he lost to John Moxley last week. I don't blame him. He would I'd be upset too. And the fact of the matter is this Roosh is going to eventually be in the semifinals of the the Gold League. You guys know this because some people are going to say, like, oh, like, Roosh doesn't deserve the spotlight. Like, Roosh has been mistreated. Like, Roosh is going to be booked better. Now, some people are going to say, oh, he's not going to win the whole thing. So what's the point of him being in the thing if he's not going to win it or anything like that? The thing about it is I don't mind if Roosh does not win this at all. He just needs to be on fucking television. That's my problem. That's what I've been complaining about. For Roosh for fucking months now. People have just now starting to understand the words coming out of my mouth about Roosh. Yeah, it took y'all this long? I've been talking about Roosh for fucking eight months now. Man. Yeah. Wake yeah, up, y'all. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that uh, that's fair. Uh, now, another match in the Gold League in the AEW Continental Classic Tournament. Jay White versus Mark Briscoe. Ben, I'm going to give you the honor of reviewing this match. Oh, and by the way, uh, Mark Briscoe actually cussed out WWE on Fox for using them boys on Twitter. And, oh man, that was crazy. And I think even Maria Kanellis even cussed them out mickey james weighed in on it um and yeah it was crazy um but yeah i'm gonna hand all it right. over to you ben yeah i heard about that hey mark briscoe you know hey he he deserved he he had to do that he had to do that but man i am a little bit upset at how they're booking mark briscoe in this tournament i'm i'm a little bit upset because like I'm not I'm not mad that he is in the tournament. I'm not mad at that. I'm mad at the way he hasn't gotten a win in this whole Continental Classic because like he's really good in the ring. Like this guy is really, really good in the ring. A lot of people don't give him credit for his in ring work. I'll give him credit all day. At the end of the day. But who am I to complain here? I I, I don't know. Ain't nothing gonna change with AEW. They gon' they're gonna do what they wanna do. Ain't nothing gonna change. Jay White versus Mark Briscoe, um, they go at each other because apparently Jay White and Mark Briscoe have been uh, trading back and forth uh, shots at each other on, um, you know, different videos and stuff like that. So Mark Briscoe immediately hits Froggy Bow, but Jay White rolls out to the outside to avoid being pinned. So we already had one finisher in this match in the first two minutes of this match. Unnecessary. Mark Briscoe, then um, he attacks Jay White. He chokes Jay White with the cable on the outside of the ring, and then um, they take it back inside the ring. Mark Briscoe gets some offense on Jay White. Jay White stops Mark Briscoe by launching off the top rope, hitting a move, 
I don't know what he hit. I don't know if he had a clothesline or something like that. Um, and then Jay White then bounces off the apron, and then um, Jay White then comes back. He goes for a Blade Runner. Mark Briscoe counters. Then he comes back with a DDT for a two count as we head to commercial break. After the break, they're going back and forth on the ropes and in the corner with Mark Briscoe hitting a back body drop on Jay White. Uh, followed by a clothesline, and then Mark Briscoe chops away at Jay White, which were very good chops, to say the least. Mark Briscoe then hits an apron uh, elbow drop off the apron, and then he uh, beats up Jay White some more. He puts Jay White on the top rope, and he hits a razor's edge off the top rope to Jay White. I thought that was the finish. I thought that was the finish. Dude, Like that was a great spot. It looked good. It, it it sounded good, too. It, it was great. But Jay White kicks out. That should have been the finish right there. That razor's edge off the top rope, that should have been finished. Um, Jay White blocks a Jay Driller attempt with some dragon screws. And then uh, Jay White tries for his attempt of a froggy bow. But um, Mark Briscoe gets his knees up. But then um, Jay White, he, he turns the tables on Mark Briscoe. He takes advantage. And... Jay White hits the Blade Runner. One, two, three. Mark Briscoe loses again for the fourth time in a row in this tournament. What the hell was this? What was this? Why is Jay... I understand why Mark Briscoe did not need to win this match because he's going to be at um, Final Battle for Ring of Honor. I get that. I'm not going to be... I'm not going to complain about that. But the fact that Mark Briscoe can't win a, a match in this tournament against, like... All of these other people? What's going on here? Rightfully yeah. so. <laughs> Jeez, yeah. I, I'll give this match I'll give this match a seven. Logic probably a two. Honestly. Yeah. Mark Briscoe yeah, did not need to lose this match. Yeah, this was an okay match. I gave Rassin a seven and Logic a six. Thank you for that, Ben. Now we're going to go to the final match, the main event of this episode. And uh, that is a gold league, another gold league match in the AEW Continental Classic Tournament between John Moxley and Swell Strickland. Um, Your referee, Paul and, Turner. Uh, <laughs> Um, yeah. Don't get me um, started. Don't get me started. <laughs> also, your yeah. referee, by the way, I forgot to mention, for Brody King and Andrade, your referee was Rick Knox. Rick Knox yeah. refereed two matches on this goddamn show. <laughs> yeah, Ben's favorite referee. No, it's not. <laughs> Yeah, um, and I'm like, Swerve needs to win this match. Joe Moxley can take a loss, uh, in my opinion. He's pretty much bulletproof because he's already like a massive star in this company. He, uh, does he really need to win this match? He's already won like three matches. Um, so yeah, they started the match already. People are chanting, holy shit. Um, to have technical wrestling and people chanting AE dub, AE dub. Moxley puts in a front face lock. Uh, they get a rope break. Moxley kisses Swerve. I uh, you know they go back and forth and, um, Swerve kisses Moxley back. Uh, and if you're homophobic, you probably didn't like that. Um, Moxley puts in a hammer lock. Um, Swerve put in a side headlock. Moxley tried to escape, but then Swerve hit a uh, hit a hurricane runner. Moxley rolled out the ring. Uh, he went up the ramp. He got back in the ring. They had a one to exchange. Moxley did some chops. They had a struggle at the turnbuckle, and then Swerve hit a second rope DDT, which was cool. He went for the pin, got a one count. Uh, I don't know if that should have warranted a one count. I would have got at least a two count, if not a near four. Um, they fought at ringside. They got back in the ring. Moxley absorbed a hammer throw. And then uh, he hit a lariat. And he did some punches in the corner. He bit Swerve. Um, he went for, he hit a stalling pile driver for a two count. Swerve yanked Moxley onto ringside. He missed a plancha and then he landed balls first between the apron cover. And then Moxley was jerking the apron cover up and down. And, um, he slammed Swerve into the steps. 
They went to the break. They got back in ring. Moxley raked Swerve's back. Uh, he did a superplex. Um, he put in a hammerlock. He jerked Swerve's fingers. He jerked him some more. He got back from the break. Um, I don't know why Josh did that. Um, and then uh, Moxley was working on Swerve's bad shoulder. Swerve um, escaped. Moxley hit a nice lariat. He went for the pin, got a two count. Moxley did some mock kicks. Swerve hit a backbreaker and he made a comeback. And then Moxley hit a cutter for a near fall, and that was cool. Um, he hit a gotch pile driver for a two count, did some kicks, uh, did some headbutts. Swerve hit a flatliner, which was cool. Um, then Swerve hit uh, what looked. Uh, Swerve hit a claymore for a near fall, and Tony Schiavone called it the Swerve Matic. I think I don't know if that is that's it. Uh, that's its official name, but yeah, um, he does some hammer and anvils. Um, he does a house call, and man, I love when he does that. That's probably my second favorite finisher, but behind the Stormbreaker and the Hidden Blade for top, probably my um, third favorite. Uh, finisher in, the, in wrestling. Uh, he gets on the top turnbuckle. Moxley shoves him off. Um, he sort of almost got counted out. Moxley hit a curb stomp for a near fall, and that was crazy. He did some grounded pod punches. He put in the sleep sleeper, put in the cross arm breaker. Swerve got a rope break. Moxley grabbed a chair. Swerve hit a plancher, did a kick. Moxley collapsed onto the chair. Swerve hit a stomp. He got back in the ring. Swerve did a stomp for a near fall. And then Moxley got a cradle pin for the win. And I was like, no, why? Swerve needed that win. And Swerve was rightfully pissed for this result. Um, but, you know, all that out the way, this was a great match. I'll give Rasson an 8.5 and Logic a 5. Ben, what did you think of this match? Did you see Swerve Strickland's shoulder was up on that pin? Oh, oh, I didn't really see that. His shoulder was up. Oh, oh man. Yeah, his shoulder was up on the pin, y'all. People oh. were thought, oh, Swerve got pinned? No, 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 no. His shoulder was up. I saw it. I had to rewatch it twice. I was like, I know I'm not tripping. Paul Turner, are you that bad of a fucking referee to be missing that? <laughs> Josh did what? the uh, Josh did the wah 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 that was funny I, and he did it again oh, man. hey Josh oh. lay off the soundboard for a minute will you please for god's sakes listen this match was good except the finish why is it in AEW that every match is a good match except in some of the matches to finish his are god uh, awful atrocious finishes for some of these matches john moxley had to roll up swerve strickland on a pin that swerve strickland's shoulder was up and then paul turner the um fucking idiot referee that he fucking is like he didn't even see the shoulder he didn't even look at swerve strickland's position in the way that he was he was in a very compromised position, obviously, with Swerve Strickland. So, at the end of the day, why why didn't Paul Turner look at his shoulders? Because his shoulder was up. I know I was not tripping. And a lot of people were complaining about that, that finish, too, because Swerve Strickland's shoulder was up. So, I know I'm not tripping. If the fans call you out for your, ne for your negligence as a referee, you do not deserve to be a referee. Absolutely fucking not. No. No, no, no. If you're going to do some yeah, shit like that. Oh, man. No. No. This yeah. was a great match until this fucking finish. Paul Turner is getting an immediate $400 fine. What the fuck was that? What was that? <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. And then um, after you. that, Hangman got attacked by the devil's advocates, as I like to call them. And with that... We went off the air, and yeah, um, this was a pretty decent show. This was another good winter is coming. I gave Rasson an 8 and Logic a 5, simply because some of the shenanigans on the show, and especially at the beginning of the show, with that Samoa Joe and Roderick Strong BS, 
that did not need to happen at all. But yeah, Ben, what were your thoughts on this show? My my thoughts on this show. Um, I forgot to give a rating for the main event. Um, Swerve Strickland versus John Moxley. I'll give it an eight. Logic. I'll give it a four. I'm being generous, really, but I'll give it a four. Um, the whole entire show. I thought this was actually a pretty solid winter is coming. To be honest with you, I just feel like there were a lot of other things on the show that did not need to be on the show or just in general. We did not need Orange Cassidy making an appearance on this show. We did not need Dan Housen on my fucking television. We did not need Paul Turner and Rick Knox in two separate matches on this fucking show. Absolutely not. Some of the worst referees in the history of Western civilization. I can't stand these men. These men have got to go. If these men are not fired by the summer of 2024, somebody is getting their ass whooped. I don't know who the fuck Thanks, Paul Turner and Rick Knox are great referees. I can't stand Dang. these men. Yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable. But this show was actually pretty good. I'll give this a seven and a half. Logic, I'll give it a three. Okay. And with Damn. that, uh, we end off this episode. Um, yeah, this is a good episode. I just hope it's been recorded and you know all of it is good um and yeah um be sure to check out um certified bangers uh and uh mysteries of life as well as the musical circle which should be starting restarting up soon and um i might be on the next episode of uh the mysteries of life who knows that's a mystery to be solved um and you know ben also might be on the christmas episode of um of uh certified bangers and yeah um i hope you guys have enjoyed my 19th birthday episode as well as the bang awards um and yeah that is um yeah that is a part of our pentuple header of um special episodes for certified bangers um the bang awards my birthday episode the Christmas episode and the New Year's episode. My bad. Um. Uh. The. It's okay. Sorry. The 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 quadruple header. I think I meant to say. Right. Um. It's and okay. Yeah. Um, um. Before we go. Before we go, Cabo. I must sing you your favorite song in the world. Happy birthday to my friend Cabo. Happy birthday to you, even though your birthday's tomorrow. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Cabo. Happy birthday to you. Wow, thank you, Ben, so much for that. I appreciate that a lot. Um, yeah, <laughs> thank you very much for that. And yeah, with that, we will finally end this episode. So yeah, we will be back for AEW World's End. Um, keep a lookout for um, Ben's extra episode. He's probably going to review, uh, he might review Ring of Honor Final Battle. That just depends on how he feels. And yeah, um, until then, on behalf of the main host of Life Shopping Radio, the co-producer, of Life Shopping Radio Certified Bangers, a temporary co-producer and guest host on Life Shopping Radio World Break, and my good friend Joshua James Jenkins, and the main host of The Mysteries of Life, the and the Musical Circle Podcast, a recurring guest host on Life Shopping Radio Certified Bangers. The assistant host of this podcast, Life Shopping Radio World Break, and also my good friend, Ben Charles. This is Carbonator. Finding out. <laughs>